200 years after it was invented by your doctor, your doctor still relies on the trusty stethoscope. But that old standby is getting a run for its money from a host of medical innovations that could change the face of health care. Here to share more about the medical breakthroughs coming to a hospital near you is Kara Miller, host of WGBH Radio's Innovation Hub. Thanks for coming here. Kim. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So actually, we were talking about 3D printing with Heather Goldstone right. about two weeks ago, but they're actually going to bring it to the medical field as well. Yeah, it's really interesting. Here's a technology that was originally for one purpose, right? You have you have ink in your mm -hmm. little inkjet printer, right? And you put it on a piece of paper. And, and people thought, well, why does that have to be ink? Why couldn't it be human cells? Why couldn't mm -hmm. we print anything? Instead of, you know, a document, why couldn't we print anything? And so we've seen human cells being used. We've seen rubber being used, plastic, metal. So 3D printing just sort of open up, opens up a whole new possibility with making I mean, medical devices. Could they make an organ? We saw a video earlier of that little boy who's got a 3D hand, which yes. is just incredible. But could it make an actual organ? Yeah, you, we've seen bladders actually being really? made, yeah, with 3D printing. Now, there are some organs that are harder to make. So kidneys, for example, there you see that synthetic bladder? bladder. Yes, oh. it is. But here's the, here's the interesting part about it is, you know, when you get an organ transplant, you're getting somebody else's cells. But mm -hmm. what if we could cultivate your own cells, right, and minimize your chance of rejection? And the other thing that's happening, too, is people are making all sorts of prosthetics already um, with 3D printing. So, you know, you have a lot of people, of course, coming back from war without limbs. Why not make yourself a prosthetic in exactly the way you want it to be? And you see kids yeah. who are missing an arm able to do exactly what they want and make a prosthetic that can throw a ball really well. Right, so one of your breakthroughs is really not technology so much as, as, as a field of research. Yeah, and I think this is going to get a lot of attention in 2014. It started getting a fair amount in 2013. It's the area of as strange as it may sound, gut bacteria, stomach bacteria. So it turns out that we are more bacteria than we are human cells. There's more stuff living in us, using us as a host, than actually us, you know, sort of the Kara or the Emily cells. Um, and it turns out that these cells regulate all sorts of things. Um, there was actually a fascinating study done looking at Finland and Russia, neighboring areas where people are genetically the same, and it turns out that the people in Russia have fewer autoimmune diseases, have fewer allergies, and it may be because they live in a less clean society. So yeah. we've seen like the advent of Purell. Purell was invented in 1988. And it turns out that bacteria may be a lot better for us than we realize. So, and, and what would you do with it? How would you get in there? Would you transfer it to somebody else? Yeah, so, so yes, you can transfer stomach bacteria. In fact, it turns out that thin mice and fat mice and thin people and fat people have different kinds of stomach bacteria. Uh -huh. And they've started to do this in mat mice. They've done uh, bacteria transplants. So it turns out if you take the bacteria from a thin mouse and transplant it, that it will make the fatter mouse thinner. So, I mean, there's real implications here for what could potentially be done for people. So yesterday we were talking to the Boston Globe's Hiawatha Bray about wearable technology, and yes. he mentioned using it in the medical field, and both personally to keep track of your own heart rate and that kind of thing, but you, you take it right into the hospital room. That is changing how medicine is done and delivered. And actually, Hiawatha talked about this sort of onesie that you put on a baby, and it checks whether the baby's heart beat is still going all the time. But there are also shirts that you can wear now with tiny, tiny, tiny sensor sensors to sense whether you have sleep apnea. You're seeing it right there. That's from rest devices. Tiny, you know, these sensors that can be shrunk down. Um, but you're also seeing people wearing Fitbits and Nike fuel bands. And increasingly, that is keeping track of calories burned, your heart rate, and all that stuff can go in a stream to your doctor who can now figure out what is it that seems to trigger the problems that you have. You know, they, instead of you just... You can't lie anymore? No, I didn't, I didn't have that much to drink. No, I didn't need any of that. Uh, yeah, that, well, that's true, too. But the nice thing is, you know how when you go to the doctor and your blood pressure goes way up because you're at the doctor? They can actually track your blood pressure in reality, in your real life, instead of the sort of artificial, you're scared, you're at the doctor, and they check your blood pressure. Uh, and, and what about apps, too? Is there a way to apply some oh, yeah. of that? Oh, yeah. Well, one of the things you see happening is cardiologists, for example, mm -hmm. are, are prescribing fewer and fewer pills and more and more apps, right, so that you can keep track of what's happening. Yeah. 
happening yeah. instead of just just turning to medicine. And they can also get a better sense of what triggers what. And I think in some ways it's it's making it more transparent. So we the, your doctor can really see your data, you know, really every day on a three, six, nine month you know, trajectory okay, and see what happens to you. an app where you push it and it gives your heart rate or something like that because people who are supposed to keep track of that stuff, they just don't do it. Oh, yeah. Well, so the thing is, sensors are now so small that they can be embedded in, like, sports bras. They can be, you know, like I said, people have these Fitbits and fuel bands. So, yes, it is being, it's not the kind of thing where you have to work hard anymore. It's the kind of thing where the sensor is there, yeah. it's picking up that information, and it can just go in a stream to your doctor who can really figure out what the big picture is. Yeah, that's crazy. So, All right. Sounds yeah. great. Karen Miller, thanks so much.